Oh, hey, Mark. How's it going? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I was expecting your call. I, I was just waiting. I figured, you know, any day now, you'd just be calling in. And, like, listen, I got my suitcase ready. Like, I'm ready to come to Green Bay to interview for the job. Oh, I see. No, I get it. Yeah, no, no. That makes, that makes sense. Yeah. No. Yeah, no. Someone who actually... Yeah, I, I know Madden's really not a great... Great... I mean, like, I won, like, six Super Bowls. No, I understand. No, like, this is real life. No, 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 I get that. I get that. I get that. Yeah. So, like, that that water boy position, is that... Is, no, okay. Oh, there's there's no one on this other line? Because I'm, I'm just a person who does a Packer show out of his basement. Got it. Got it. Okay. Yep. Not a problem. Okay. All right. No, no. You too. Have a great day. Yeah. Bye. He said I was this close. Crossy Posse Packer Nation! Welcome to another episode of Packcast, the podcast where you don't have to be a Packers fan. But it sure does help. I'm your host, Tom Grassi, and the Green Bay Packers. It looks like we have a brand spanking new head coach in Matt LeFleur. And if you're like, Tom, that's the guy who plays dodgeball, I'm going to be like, that's going to be a meme that's never going to go away for the next 48 hours, and I welcome it. Yep, Matt LeFleur, which some of you are already saying, who? Yes, I understand that. Uh, but on this episode, I, I swear, I did the notes for Matt LaFleur. This episode was going to come out this week. And of course, they couldn't just wait. They couldn't give me a break. I have done like six streams slash episodes in the past 48 hours. And I'm starting to freak out a little bit, man. But that's okay, because I'm going to tell you who Matt mother loving LaFleur is. Right me out. Matt LaFleur, sexy man international has been in the nfl since 2008 for 2008 to 2013 then he took a little hiatus as the offensive coordinator for notre dame then came back and has been in the league since 2015 now to kind of break down his resume for you uh i have to say right off the bat his resume is pretty darn impressive the coaching trees that he is studied under as well as his jobs and the results that they have produced and i know you're probably thinking but Cam, he's the Titans' offensive coordinator. I know. I got that. And and I know that they weren't so hot this year, but we'll get there. I promise. So from 2010 to 2013, he was the Redskins' QB coach. So he mentored RG3 uh, back in you know his rookie days where he had a phenomenal season. And then even his sophomore season, after he got injured, he wasn't terrible. He had over 3,000 yards, had double-digit touchdowns. Uh, but especially that rookie season, the fact that he was able to work with RG3. RG3 has come out on record saying how great LaFleur of a coach he was and that he had a great relationship with him, foreshadowing, because that's going to come up later in this video. And then after, so he obviously worked with Shanahan, then he's just like, I'm going to go to Notre Dame for Jesus. But then he was like, Jesus, I'm going to go make more money in the NFL. So he went to the Falcons underneath good old Dan Quinn. Now, he was the Falcons QB coach there from 2015 to 16, in which Matt Ryan had an MVP season, f threw for 4,944 yards, 38 touchdowns, and a career-tying low seven interceptions. Obviously going to the Super Bowl that year and losing to the New England Patriots, but uh, obviously a super-duper job by Matt LaFleur working with Matt Ryan. Then in 2017, he went under Sean McVay as the Rams offensive coordinator. He did not call plays, which is important, but he didn't call plays. And under him, though, Goff threw for 3,800 yards. Gurley ran for over 1,300 yards. And three wide receivers were over 700 yards. So the reason I super duper like that is you have two back-to-back -back offenses that are known for their high-powered offenses. One of those kicked the living crap out of the Packers in the NFC Championship game, and all of us sat there in awe going, I wish I had an offense like that, and maybe a defense too. And while he might not be the defensive guy, he is the offensive guy that is behind those numbers. But the Rams offensive coordinator, I love the fact that he studied under McVay. 
McVay has become like the poster child for young coaches, and this guy is adapted to an offense that can fit in 2019. I have said that statement over and over and over and over again because I want a young, fresh coach. I'm glad they went outside of the organization, someone who has never had anything to do with the organization. That's a good thing. Then he took the Titans offensive coordinating job this year. This wasn't a step down or, you know, just wanted to go to a different job, but he wasn't kicked out. He went to the Titans because he wanted to call plays, and that's exactly what he did under the Titans. Now, a lot of people are going to be looking at these numbers. The Titans offensive stats for this year, 27th in points, 25th in overall yards, 29th in passing yards, and 7th in rushing yards. And now this is the point where you're probably saying, Tom, those numbers suck. And I would say, yeah, they kind of do. But... I want to take it with a tiny bit of a grain of salt because, one, obviously the Titans aren't the most talented team on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, the number that really sticks out to me and the one that I'm super-duper stoked about is the rushing one that it, it was seventh in the league, which means feed Aaron Jones all day, every day. But we'll get to that. I think the also reason why I'm like not completely, totally do, you know, saying, like, oh, my God, he's going to be terrible is – because, listen, he was in the job for a year. It's the first time of him calling plays, and I, I don't expect anyone to do it well on their first try. That's just me. Maybe I'm being too much of an optimist there, and that's fine. You can rip me apart in the comments for it. Now, let's take a look at the pros. Pros, 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 pros. I really need to get an echo machine in here. Now, here are the good things about Matt LaFleur. One, I think the reason that he got hired, and I'm going to go out on a total limb here, is the relationships that he has built with the QBs over his career. I really think the focal point of whoever we wound up hiring needed to have an amazing relationship with Aaron Rodgers. The media, everyone has picked apart the relationship between McCarthy and Aaron Rodgers and how toxic it was and how Rodgers would you know, roll his eyes or just call completely different plays and throw 40-yard bombs against Seattle. And McCarthy would just be like, what? Not a great relationship. And a lot of people were like, well, Rodgers got McCarthy fired, what have you. So you needed a guy to come in to be a QB whisperer and just be like, Aaron, it's okay. You're going to throw for over 4,000 yards again. You needed that kind of guy. You needed someone who was going to be able to work with Rodgers to reach his potential again because after what Packer fans would call a mediocre season, even though he's still like top five in the NFL, a mediocre season, you want him to reach those numbers again and able to kind of get back to his peak form. So I think the fact that he had he's worked with guys like RG3 when he was good, Matt Ryan for an MVP season, he worked with a new guy like Jared Goff, I think those are all great things, and he's worked for offenses that can work in freaking 2019. Like, that is really, really important for me. So I think that's great. While I released a Brian Flores video today saying I wouldn't mind a defensive kind of change of pace, the Packers obviously disagreed, and I'm not, a hundred, I'm not really surprised, considering that the Packers have been offensively minded for God knows how long, basically as long as I've been alive. So... With that in mind, this is a safe pick for them, a guy who knows offenses, who knows how to get results, and he's going to be able to do that, hopefully, for our offense as well. Um, and the number one thing that I'm super stoked about, besides his relationship with Rodgers, is the fact that he is not afraid to run the ball, whether that's with Derrick Henry, whether that's with Todd Gurley. I'm very, very happy about that because one of the things that we constantly criticized McCarthy over was give the damn ball to Aaron Jones. Well, get ready for fantasy next season, kids, because Aaron Jones is going to be a, lit a lot of touches. And even Jamal Williams, who was pretty damn good in Aaron Jones' absence, having a huge game against the Jets, I, I think that this would could be great. Also, you had guys like Mercedes Lewis going on and talking about how McCarthy's offenses weren't built for tight ends. Hopefully, LeFleur can kind of bring some of that in as well. Now, let's look at the cons, 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 cons. A couple cons here. One, he only has one year of play calling experience. That's a little bit worrisome. But for all of you that were like, oh my God, Josh McDaniels, please be my new dad. He wasn't calling the plays in New England. So that was kind of a big thing, guys. So just saying, just saying. He doesn't have any head coaching experience as well. Just rising as high as offensive coordinator. That's a little bit concerning. Uh, and uh, the third thing is there's definitely going to be an adjustment period. Now, does that mean we're not going to make the playoffs next season? Eh. I'm not going to put the carriage in front of the horse because I think that th this is going to take time. I know all of you just want to pull a complete ah, 
Tokyo Drift and do a U-turn, essentially, and pretend that these last two seasons never happened. But it's going to take time. I like the fact that the Packers actually chose him pretty quickly because we're still in early January. He can get right to work. Obviously, there won't be players there, but, you know, he can, like, cut out, like, cardboard figures of them and, you know, yell at Rodgers and be like, stop yelling at me! You're not the coach! To practice for this upcoming season. So I like that he can get to work. Uh, he can also pick his crew, which, by the way, rumors are already saying that they're going to be keeping Mike Pettin, which I think is the best news I've heard thus far. I believe that Pettin deserved, I don't even say it's a second chance, because I think he was pretty damn good defensive coordinator considering all the injuries we have, considering we were devout of talent in a lot of crucial areas. And so I'm excited to see this guy in action. So am I blown away by the pick? No. Am I happy with the pick? Yeah. I I'm pretty, I am quite content because I think that this guy, he's a safe pick, but he also has a ton of upside. So the fact that he's coming from all these different coaching trees, the fact that he has all this experience, I'm just hoping I get to see an explosive Green Bay Packers offense again. And that's the hope. And I think that Matt LaFleur can take us there. Also, please, for the love of God, fire Ron Zook. But let me know what you think about the hire down in the comments below. You can always find me at TomGrossyComedy.com, T-O-M-G-R-O-S-S-I Comedy, or at Tom Grossi Comedy on all social media, including Patreon. Thank you for the new patrons. I love you with all of my heart. Uh, thank you so much for watching. You check out podcasts on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play Music, and, of course, here on YouTube. We do too many episodes per week, and we stream also all the games on Sunday and Saturday. Not all of them, but, you know, if you're new here, hey, Tom Grossi. Thank you so much for watching. And as always... Go Paco.